Hello folks, welcome to Pushing the Boundaries. It gives me great pleasure today to chat with Jenny Woods from NHS Tayside. Jenny is an inspiration who passionately demonstrates collaborative and innovative leadership in the analytic space. Embracing le uh, learning, Jenny has adopted the Morgan Bay Command Center approach and expanded this with the adoption of predictive analytics. Bringing frontline colleagues to the heart of BI design, Jenny is at the forefront of building a data-driven culture. So let's talk to Jenny a little bit more, push a few boundaries and see what all her great work is about. Hello, Jenny, welcome. Good morning, hi. Good morning. Great How is it? Yeah, great to see you too. How is it in Scotland today? Yeah, it's quite nice actually, sun's shining, so that's a yeah. bonus. That is a bonus. Well, it, it's raining here and it's <laughs> raining a lot down in the south of the UK. Oh, so. Um, so it's uh, good, good for you guys. And um, how's how's life in the NHS post or oh, during COVID? But uh, yeah. you know, how's it going? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's interesting. I think it is. We are in that kind of period where there was a you know there was the the real kind of pandemic when we were experiencing it and the uncertainty and the unknown as to where it was going to take us. Now it does feel in a better place. So it's just then trying to think of all the other complexities that then go with it and do a bit of planning forward. Yeah. With us now, you know, that's us coming into autumn and then winter will come, yeah. etc. cetera. So it's, yeah, but it's, it's good. It's been very exciting to be a part of it as well and really pleased yeah. to have been able to support throughout. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you see, uh, you know, a lot of those successful places really use that data-driven approach to, uh, supporting frontline colleagues and the organisation uh, fighting COVID, and obviously thanks to your colleagues, uh, yourself and your colleagues for for really doing that um, up there as well. And you know, just thinking about you know that uh, you said exciting and enjoying doing it. Um, you know, what what gets you out of bed every morning, Jenny? What drives you in your role? Yeah, so um, I've got a real passion for data. I've always loved it. I've just a really, I've got a natural curiosity really around why things are the way they are what's going on just trying to understand what happens um you know I used to work in insurance and you would analyze rates and stuff quite interesting to a degree but then when kind of came across into the nhs and understanding such a complex organization being able to then help the service the managers the consultants the staff um throughout the organization to be able to see what's going on day to day with the use of data, being able to present that data back to them in the form of information. You know, it's such a, it is such a busy environment. So you know that people don't have time to sit and read through streams and streams of papers, understand graphs, this, that, and the next thing. So the real thing I enjoy is the challenge around that. How do I help my team and the organization to see the data to see what's going on to understand the whole system and to help them then make decisions um i just yeah i, I really enjoy doing that and i'm part of a team who also have that um, vision which is fantastic um there's a lot of you know we've got a team of analysts and developers some young ones in which is just great so the whole kind of reverse mentoring and learning from them yeah. continually just that strive to learn all the time it's yeah I get a massive buzz out of it and being able to see how you're helping is is huge I, I can see that uh, Jenny and every time that we've met um, and you know interacted over social media etc I can see that passion there and it's um, and you know what that is one of the fundamentals of um, you know, taking data-driven leadership into an organisation. It's that passion, um, you know, to, 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 to really support those colleagues on the front line, isn't it? Uh, bringing people and technology together is so important. And, you know, thinking about how you've helped them, um, what kind of critical business problems are you trying to solve with your data-driven approach? Yeah, so um, I think, as I've mentioned, with the complexities within the NHS, so where we're all trying to get to is to ensure that the right patients are seen at the right time. Um, and the information and the data behind that is really crucial for the service to be, be able to provide that um, and to be trying to understand what is their demand? What is their capacity? Does it change? Does it fluctuate? Is there seasonal variation? How do they manage that going forward? So it's it can be wide ranging from, you know, how many beds do we need? How many staff do we need to be working on emergency department? 
by what time of the day because that can fluctuate greatly and um you know if there's big events going on not so much just now but if there's different events going on then you're kind of planning predicting for that so it's really helping them to have a think about how we well for us how we can then present the information to them to help them really have that flow so it's that kind of continual flow how many patients are we talking about what kind of patients what cohort and with now we're getting more and more into kind of looking at public health and using public health information because the demographics are changing Mm -hmm. and the demographics now with the kind of pandemic across covid is different as well Mm -hmm. so the flexibility that you need in the information that you're providing and what you're presenting and where you're presenting it you've really got to be able to evolve over time to be able to give that information previously we would look at historical activity and say okay we would be expecting this volume of referrals to come in over the next four weeks how many of those would go into which streams etc now we're having to think about more complexities around that what does it mean kind of post-COVID, how many referrals are coming in and what is it likely to be? And also, you know, we don't want to be bringing patients on site if we don't need to bring them on site. So it's that shift in culture as well and helping the organisation to have the data that shows that shift in culture. Also then involving the patients, it's much more of a kind of collaborative approach now, which is which is great. Um, but yeah, the critical element is how do we really, it is very patient focused and how do we ensure that the data we're providing helps that patient flow? Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, it, it's surprising how many people still don't really understand their demand. And I, I say understand the demand, understand the demand that really drives patient care, really dr- the, the capacity capability of the organisation. Uh, the volumetrics, the flow, as you mentioned, that patient flow, um, you know, excellent, outstanding organisations really get and understand their demand and how they respond to that and planning and all the rest of it. So looking ahead, Jenny, and how you, you know, you're positioning analytics as this is forward looking and not looking you know, in the rear view mirror. That's a great, uh, great thing that I, I, I can imagine as you talk about it. Uh, really gets uh, your frontline colleagues excited uh, about what data can bring to their lives and their work. So that's great to hear. And, you know, I I know that you've uh, adopted, as part of that process, you've adopted the uh, command centre. So you've you've looked at what uh, Morgan Bayer has been doing and then you've adopted it and you've also then advanced it, haven't you, with predictive analytics. So tell me a bit more about what you've been doing with that one there, Jenny. Yeah, I think, yeah, definitely. I think like we were saying, you know, seeing the right patients at the right time. So for us, it's the right data at the right time. And having seen the command centre, um, kind of led by Rob O'Neill and his team, Morecambe Bay, yeah. um, just being able to see that whole system was, it was a bit of a no-brainer for us to say, we need that. Um, we've been using Click Dashboards for the past eight years. And this, um, the majority of our dashboards are Click View. Um, yeah. So this is Click Sense, which was kind of an easy transition for us to now we're running both systems in parallel. Um, mm-hmm. So having the command center um, and being able to tailor that towards the Tayside solution. So our footprint is slightly different. Up here, we work in a slightly different way in terms of our ED departments and we have acute receiving wards. So we needed to be able to um, have the visuals for all of those elements of the pathway. We've got slightly different, um, probably bottlenecks within our system that potentially they had down in Morecambe Bay so we were then able to use the command centre to have different key measures within there that we want to make visible across the organisation so the command centre we were fortunate to kind of run with that with what Morecambe Bay had done and we collaborated with them and Catalyst IT who are our click suppliers so being able to get that up and running um, the timing was perfect for us. Again, it took us three months all in to get it all in place and the command centre screens up, etc. Uh, and embedded within the safety huddles, um, mm. within the information in there. Mm. So the next step for us was around that gave us visibility of our 
ambulances coming in, our ED attendances, our emergency admissions, your bed blockers, your bed availability, all of that gave you that prediction um, for the next 24 hours. So having all of that at our fingertips and being able to think about what that helps in terms of patient flow throughout the day. Yeah. I mean, within the NHS, we are data rich. We have millions um, of data fields, data sets that are available to us uh, going back years. So then having the opportunity with the command centre and the visibility and people having people mm-hmm. engaged now in that data mm-hmm. as well and really starting to think more around you know, this this information tells us something. We can make decisions on this. How do we use this even further? So we then worked um, again with Catalyst IT to bring in R and embed R, the statistical um, package within our command centre to allow us. What it does is we've got two main cohorts of patients that it helps us to calculate and predict. So when a patient now presents at our emergency department, we have a prediction at patient level that helps us to understand how likely those patients are to become an admission um, and therefore requiring further resource downstream within the hospital. Um, So, And that calculation is done basically as soon as the patient has been triaged, um, which up here tends to be usually about 15 minutes. So within 15 minutes of that patient um, appearing at ED, we can really understand what that then means, how likely they are to then be going home at the end of that, or are we needing a bed within a medical or surgical ward somewhere downstream? So that starts those conversations much earlier. Um, The other element is around, um, we call them delayed discharges up here. I think they're bed blockers down south. So it's where a patient is medically fit to be discharged. but they're waiting for something. It could be that they're waiting for a care home place or they're waiting for adjustments to their home. Um, Any reason of complexity within there that can take time to actually resolve those things. So the earlier you can start that conversation with all the partners involved, including the family, the better. So the other R calculation that we've got in our command centre now is as soon as a patient is admitted, so they've come straight in, they're admitted into a bed, we've then got a calculation running to show how likely are they that upon discharge and then being ready and fit for discharge, are they to become a bed blocker? So the conversations that we can now start having with our health and social care partnerships, our local authorities, the family, the patient, um, and obviously all the clinical staff within the right. NHS trying to ensure that transition and that patient flow can happen at an earlier stage. It's a bit, you know, it supports the whole early um, discharge support system. We've got those kind of teams in place. So that's been a huge area for us. You know, you, you don't think you're going to manage to achieve these kind of things. If you'd said 12 months ago, right, we're going to have this list of pay and down at patient level, it's yeah. it's really fascinating and Fast. we've worked with a lot of the consultants and also the, the nursing staff as well that when we're kind of presenting these patient lists to say does that feel right you you straight away they get excited because they're saying oh wow yeah actually I can see yeah. that now and it's something that they wouldn't have been thinking of at the start of that patient's journey but yeah. it's really helped the patient flow in there. Uh, that's, that's great and that uh, leads to that sort of proactive uh, reduction in uh, demand or increased efficiency and the partnership working uh, you know we know that we've got some significant popula- population health challenges actually we've got some more acute challenges uh, that are constantly rumbling around with covid um, etc and you know austerity uh, I- i'm sure it's it's coming again isn't it uh, so you know, being in a position to work in partnership using the analytics to help support early intervention or reducing demand flow what have you together collaborate collaboratively is is you know that is just great and people like yourself really pushing that jenny uh you know we sh- everyone should be gathering around uh supporting and helping helping you achieve those aims because it's so important if we're going to you know, sustain and hopefully improve the services that we deliver isn't it so that's really great to hear um and you know talking about cultural stuff um mentioned it a bit um you know how how important is that sort of data-driven culture in your strategy uh what kind of what sort of 
you know, call it a blueprint, but what sort of things do you view as really important in, in the organisation for that and yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the data-driven culture is essential. We would not have achieved what we've achieved over the past few years without that. Um, and yeah. We're very fortunate within NHS TASER. Our chief executive is very data-driven and digitally driven as well, which is fantastic because the two for us go hand in hand. So yeah. to be part of, we've now, you know, our data and information and analytics is now part of our digital strategy, um, which it previously wouldn't have been mentioned in. Um, there was just obviously the kind of assumption that, you know, information would be yeah. provided, etc. where it's now got its own um, remit within there. We have um, a real executive leadership team, again, that are data driven. They don't want to be understandably in a position where they're making major changes or yeah. not understanding what's going on within their services without having the data and information behind it. So they do we've managed to get to the stage where we're now integrated at that kind of level um, so that they look to us for assurance or they look to us to be involved in major programs of work or major projects to help provide that information um, and that's when we would then start to look towards the dashboards and making you know information self-service or yeah. um, providing that further layer of analytics within there yeah. um, we are now within NHS data over the past few years as well. Um, we're now clinically driven, uh, clinically led, and managerially driven, which means that the consultants actually own the services out, and it's all clinical leads that manage the streams. So the relationship that we've now managed to build with um, the consultants and the consulting uh, group as well, we have clinical quality fellows, we have digital champions that are consultants, wow. and you know their understanding of data and information is second to none so they are a great audience for us to test things yeah. out on to try things to say does this make sense would you use this they're also very yeah. very busy people so when you present things if they don't see that there's any value in it they'll tell you quickly enough yeah. but you also know that well actually it's obviously not the right solution then because they need it needs to be decision ready data yeah. they need to be able to make decisions very quickly on it um yeah. We tend to, so that's kind of internal, but yeah. the board as well, our health board, we're fortunate in that they are very open to us having conversations with whether it be other health boards across NHS. And NHS Scotland is, is um, we are fortunate there again in that they, yeah. they welcome sharing. They welcome sharing of ideas and concepts yeah. and if you know, our chief exec is sitting in a meeting with another area and they're talking about ideas and concepts, he'll bring it back and say, go and have a chat with them. There's a lot of collaborative working and it's not just within the NHS. Um, they're keen that we do work with third party suppliers as well. Mm -hmm. We're not going to pretend that we've got the skills or the knowledge in house to be able to come up with all these kind of digital strategies and where we're at. We can't move at a quick enough pace for that. So we do explore what else is out there um, and the benefits that we can gain from that. And it's it's a great investment for us to make as opposed to kind of trying to bring in more skills and things in-house and train them up. We don't know the answers just now. So um, mm -hmm. for all of these, kind of where we're going to be and where we can get to. So we do rely on the external ideas and solutions and kind of collaborating mm -hmm. across that way as well. Um, and it's yeah. been, it's proved of great benefit for us, certainly. That's great, Jenny. And um you know, again, that collaborative leadership, it shines, a beacon, for it, it shines through. And um, I used, a, uh, I was on the Scottish Click Meetup uh, the, the other day, and uh, I used uh, yourself and the example of that. Uh, there was a picture that you uh, posted around when you were implementing the command centre and how you had those operational, sort of that operational people in with you, uh, you, know, you join together, you, you, you're really sort of looking to, you um, make sure that business drives what you do and that was lovely to see and i used that example a lot in in the, in my journey um so uh thank you for that and i think you know uh that uh, it's great to see your senior leadership also uh may, maybe that's you know it's a cultural thing uh, you know it comes from come from the top here but um but it's great to see that uh people can really push things on for the for the patients uh of the public by doing that and that's you know that's the key thing isn't it there's a lot of parochialism out there uh, a lot of you know well we do it our way we don't want to know about what anyone else does or we're always doing it better than those people over there 
uh, I think actually the world the world needs to move on and actually people need to be much more collaborative. So that's absolutely brilliant and, and lovely to hear, Jenny. So thank you for that. And um, just to just want to sort of pick, pick your brains on lessons learned, actually. And, you know, we hear a lot of great stuff in the world. Are there any things where you think, hmm, actually, that could have gone a bit better? I could have learned from that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, I've probably learned a lot um, over the years. I've been here um, for a number of years now. It was one of those things that when I first started in this post, uh, what's that, 19 years ago, I was kind of thinking, oh, I'll do this job for a few years, and then I'll move on to something else, you know, that thing. But yeah. it's ever evolving, it's ever changing. And it just, it, it uh, yeah, it fascinates me all the time. And there's always areas mm. of improvement that I think, oh, actually, yeah. maybe if we did this, maybe if we did that. I think the biggest thing that I've really learned, yeah. well, one of the biggest things I've really learned, um, and certainly over recent years as well, yeah. is around engaging with the stakeholders earlier in these kind yeah. of programs of work. Previously, we would tend to work in an environment where myself, my team um, of analysts and developers, we would go and scope out the requirements. We would spec it up. We would get that yeah. signed off by the service. We would go and squirrel away for six months yeah. um, and then come out the end of six months and go, ta-da, this is what you asked for. <laughs> um, yeah. And I say, well, that wasn't quite what we were looking for. Or actually, that was six months yeah. ago. That's not relevant to us now, which is a bit disheartening. It was a bit um, yeah. thinking, oh, oh, right, okay, we've clearly not, um, we've missed the point there so yeah. I think now and with the culture we've got now which is it does feel it's a bit more collaborative now and and um, potentially a bit more open and honest we're able to and what I encourage my staff and my team now to do is to be honest about um, you know, the progress where we're at what how yeah. we see things we're not, none of my team, we're not medically trained. We're not, you know, I don't have any knowledge, medical background or anything like that. So I need to ask questions. Um, you know, nowadays, if I'm doing a piece of work, I'll have a list of, you know, the kind of daft lassie questions and I'm quite comfortable to ask them now. I think previously pride or things, you know, get in the way and you kind of worry that you're going to look a bit daft or a bit silly or whatever. Whereas now I don't, mind because I know that the objective is actually to come up with a product, a dashboard, a toolkit, whatever it may be, a report that is fit for purpose. And if I've misinterpreted the requirement at the outset, that's okay. Um, but it's then engaging with the stakeholders on an ongoing basis as you're developing and not being scared to take a prototype out to say, is this is this what you're looking for? Is this what you meant? Yeah. Do you want to try this for a week and let us know? Mm -hmm. and we'll meet back again the next week. It does mean that more time is spent saying conversations, meetings, etc., as opposed to just cracking on and kind of developing yeah. the product or the dashboard. But you soon realise that in the long run, that is time well invested at yeah. the start and throughout the project and throughout the programme of work. Because otherwise, yeah, mm. you'll find yourself way down the line thinking, oh, I'm clearly off target here. So, yeah, yeah there, there's a I few know. instances and few examples of that that I've had over the years. Uh, that's great. Uh, great advice. And uh, I, I, I'm with you and I'm sure a lot of people are that have gone through that, uh, gone through those lessons um, and I think you know, that sort of agile methodology uh, is is definitely the way forward. Of certainly around analytics uh, and business, things are changing so fast these days. You've got to be, um, you know, got to be working in the kind of modern thinking and modern way. And uh, that's that's a great lesson. I think that for those that aren't doing it, maybe to explore that way of working a bit more. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you for being honest in in saying that. Um, also, um, I think what uh, also what people folks would be probably quite interested in is what exciting things have you got coming next? You know, what, what problems are you trying to solve and how are you doing it? Yeah, so kind of where we're at now is there's obviously the continual development of the command centre. So we're looking with winter coming up, we are looking to try to develop it further and to start thinking about predictions 
um, over the winter. We want to be able to create kind of trigger points, but not just trigger points in terms of, okay, our occupancy of our beds and our wards is now up at say 85%. We need to have a think mm -hmm. about what we're planning in terms of beds. We want to really be taking the information that we have now over the previous four months, five months, having a look at NHS 24 calls out of hours, um, anything, any uh, community testing team, the staffing, the workforce, and the knock-on effect that that then did have to our beds to see if there's any correlation in there at all to then explore that further so that we can see if areas of demand are increasing out in the community that may have a knock-on effect. I think, again, historically, we would tend to say, well, unless it's a hard statistical rule that there's a direct correlation in there, we can't then present that kind of, oh, well, this may happen. Whereas there's a lot more of that conversation going on now and acceptance that it may not result in that in the end, but actually, mm -hmm. even just being aware that that could potentially happen, you're better being forewarned than just not even thinking yeah. about it at all across the services. So we're looking into that in the command centre and I can just imagine the command centre, it's just going to be ever evolving, which is great. Yeah. Um, there's another kind of two key areas of work as well. So one of them is we're working with um, ClickSense and the ED and uh, the emergency department and mm -hmm. the Dundee University and working with the students who have been linking with public um, and patients coming into our emergency departments. So we've been redesigning the marketing and the all of the communication and anything around our emergency department, which is also encompassing a ClickSense dashboard, which will be on display in the waiting area. Public facing, so, fantastic. Yeah, what we're looking to show in there is helping them to give a sense, helping them to get a sense of how busy the emergency department is and how long likely it is that they're going to wait for but not probably in just thinking about well there's 20 patients in because there could be 20 patients in but you've got enough mm. clinical staff or admin staff to actually ensure the throughput so we're trying to make it a bit more realistic based on actually this is our current position the command center then feeds into that um and you know with the visuals that the university students have kind of come up with as well and kind of tying it all in together so that's very right. exciting um, and another major piece of work which you'll be aware of is our work with infinity so we yeah. are um there is a fantastic click extension called um forms mm -hmm. and i envisage forms to be the next big thing compared with the command mm -hmm. center I think yeah. it is the opportunities are endless. What Forms gives us is it is, you know, it's kind of user friendly forms that yeah. the entry of data can go directly into the forms. You can then use that data, you can store it, or you can use its calculations and expressions within your ClickSense dashboard so that straight away it then uh, displays that information and it gives you the results back there and then which is yeah. going to be huge. I mean, I've, we've got quite a few use cases that we're exploring around it just now, but one of those use cases yeah. is we have a patient quality, a clinical quality dashboard. What it does just now is um, the ward staff capture measures for a random 20 patients that have gone through their ward each month. They capture the kind of numerator and denominator. So looking at, say, nutrition measures, early warning scores, pressure ulcers, falls, patient safety measures, those kind of clinical quality measures that are a bit more qualitative. But what it then does is kind of takes your numerator and denominator and then it creates a, a rate, which just now what happens is they enter all of this information. They've got to log on to a toolkit, which is a bit basic. Um, doesn't always work. Um, but it needs to be kind of supported by IT if it kind of crashes. Um, they then go on, they enter the information within there at a certain point in the month. We then go and pull that information out. We mm. then take that information and put it into a quality dashboard. Mm. The chances of the person has entered that data to then later in the month at some point go in and have a look at the quality dashboard to see what it's showing them 
are slim mm -hmm. and we understand why mm -hmm. it's slim because you've got to then remember to go in at some point. Mm -hmm. You've then got to try to understand and remember what you entered in the toolkit in the first place to then see how it's rendering at the front end of the dashboard. Mm -hmm. So for a lot of the ward staff, I can imagine it feels like they're just plugging data into a black hole to tick a box. Yeah, yeah. And the benefit of the forms, what that will allow us to do is to actually build the form into the ClickSense dashboard itself. So we'll then have the clinical, I mean, it's all clinical staff as well. So you can, you, you, the thought of them doing data entry and taking time away from seeing patients to then not get anything back, we yeah. want to move, we need to move away from that. Yeah. So they will then be able to enter. We can design the forms working with Infinity and we can ensure that the forms are tailored for each of the ward areas because they're all slightly different depending on the patient cohort that goes through. So we can then tailor these forms, they will enter that data refresh it the information is displayed directly back to them which helps them to see trends exceptions yeah. and a huge thing for us which we've never been able to achieve is the annotations so just now they will put comments annotations within yeah. the toolkit we can't do anything with it because we don't have the functionality to do that so it's lost yeah. so when people you know two three weeks or whatever down the line are then looking at the trend yeah. graphs and seeing a data point which may be out with a control limit for example mm -hmm. saying, what happened then and nobody can quite remember so mm -hmm. the forms is going to allow that information all to be captured yeah. all to be visual the visuals the data vi visualization around click sense is mm -hmm. just so much better than anything that we're using around this kind of quality dashboard just yeah. now so it's really going to move wow. things on leaps and bounds so the key for us is kind of learning, as I was saying earlier, is we will be engaging with these ward staff that are entering the information when we're designing the forms, when we're designing the output, when we're designing this to make sure that it embeds as part of their kind of regular process and it is fit for purpose and meet requirements. But yeah. that's, I mean, that's one case study. We I haven't have heard anyone else doing that, uh, Jenny. Yeah, so, uh, that's great. So you, you are pushing the boundaries, uh, as it were, into taking analytics into action and uh, making it integrated into the toolkits that they already use in terms of your culture. So I, that's lovely to hear. And obviously, being part of Infinity, very excited to work with you guys uh, on on supporting and uh, seeing how it develops. Uh, so that's a great, great thing. Thank you for that. Um, and any other cool things you're doing in the world? Um, trying to think, yeah. I think those are the main <laughs> things, really. We do, yeah. we kind of, we sit in between sort of operational and strategic. So we're starting to explore yeah. um, a few more of the ClickSense dashboards and the functionality that's in there. Some of our operational dashboards are great for an analyst. We, you know, we can go in and we can pull out the information we're needing. But when you're starting yeah. to then present that um, to a leadership team, et cetera, yeah. You know, we, we're definitely thinking about how do we design a ClickSense dashboard using the ClickView dash information that we've already got available to us. So it's now trying to think about that whole system and thinking if we can design a ClickSense dashboard that shows how healthy is your hospital mm. right now, you know, in terms of workforce, finance, quality, around all your better health, better care. So that's when we're starting to explore, which would then pull in a bit of finance within there and workforce um, information in mm. there as well. I mean, as part of the kind of COVID um, and the development that we've done just throughout that period as well, mm. there's been a lot of kind of fast paced projects that we have turned around pretty quickly so we have a COVID lab test click view dashboard that's in there now as well and there's a kind of um, staff testing dashboard etc so I think yeah. it will be um, exploring those options as well and starting to think about how we can take that further but one of the big things as well that I want to use this time and this opportunity with the collaborative approaches around data literacy and yeah. helping to Kind of improved that across the organization and um we're looking to well we were looking to kind of have some um a hbi so health and business intelligence team kind of workshops and open mm -hmm. days for people to kind of pop in not quite so possible now in terms of you know social distancing and where we're at with the hospital and on site mm -hmm. and stuff but we just need to now work out how do we do that virtually and what mm -hmm. does it look like because that could then basically drive our objectives and our vision over the next 
you know, year, two, three years, that kind of thing. We've got the engagement. We have kind of daily slide sets that are going out to uh, well, huge groups, huge now partnerships across the area, and it's kind of feeding from the click dashboards. So there's always opportunities and potential. So much, so much, so much. And yeah. you know, I think uh, it's, it's very exciting. It's exciting to hear. And I hope uh, people that uh, listen to this reach out um, and, and tell us about it. You know, again, it's lovely to hear uh, those stories uh, that you put on, uh, that you post out there. Uh, I think that's great to hear. And people do you know, take note and they do learn from these things. Uh, and we do get a shift, a shift in the whole kind of analytics, but the whole of the NHS, for example, you know, it does move things on um, sharing these great stories. So please, please, please continue that. And, you know, being a beacon for collaboration um, um, is, is, you know, close to my heart. And I really do appreciate you spending the time talking to us about how you're doing that Jenny today uh, so thank you thank you for thank your you. time it's great thank no, you very thank you. much it's been, been brilliant and uh, hopefully we'll catch up very very soon that'd be great thank you Jenny Thanks. bye bye, bye.